Hello and welcome to the London Legal Podcast, presented by Hodge, Jones and Allen Solicitors. Our leading solicitors share their views on latest legal issues and developments, and how the law might affect you, because we care about righting wrongs and providing first-class personal legal services. So please enjoy this, the London Legal Podcast, presented by Hodge, Jones and Allen Solicitors. Hello and welcome to the London Legal Podcast. My name is Hina Moda, and I'm a partner in the personal injury team here at Hodge, Jones & Allen. The London Legal Podcast looks at a wide range of legal issues that Londoners may face at some point in their lives. Today, we will be discussing the importance of instructing a solicitor as soon as possible following an accident where you believe that you may be entitled to compensation. I'm joined by my colleague, Sarah. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Townsend and I'm a Chartered Legal Executive in the Personal Injury Team. I've dealt with many clients who wonder if they should delay bringing a claim until they know the long-term consequences of their injury. Some are also concerned that if they claim against their employer, they might lose their job. Most people are aware from TV adverts that there's a deadline of three years to bring a claim. This is an important deadline because if court proceedings are not issued, it will be difficult to proceed with the claim. However, There are disadvantages to waiting, aren't there, Hina? Yes, there are. Delaying the start of a claim is not always the best course of action for many reasons. As a general rule, it is for the person bringing the claim to prove it. One difficulty is that a person's recollection of the accident will be clearer in the weeks and months immediately afterwards. A lot of people believe that as an accident has had a big impact on their lives, they will be able to recall all of the details. However, memories do fade over time and it is likely that some relevant details will be forgotten. This is the case not only for the claimant, but also for anyone who may have witnessed the accident. There is also a possibility that witnesses will move or change their telephone numbers, which could make it much harder to trace them if there is a delay in bringing the claim, isn't there? Yes, and witness evidence can be crucial to proving a claim, so it is important to make contact with witnesses whilst the incident is still fresh in their minds. Another issue is that a delay in bringing the claim could also mean that it is more likely that crucial evidence could be lost or destroyed. What sort of evidence do you mean? Well, one example is CCTV footage. Many organisations do not keep CCTV footage for very long before it is recorded over. However, if you contact a solicitor as soon as possible after the accident, they can contact the relevant organisation and ask for the footage to be preserved. Another example relates to claims against employers. A solicitor can request important evidence such as accident reports or risk assessments. Sometimes businesses do cease trading or become insolvent, which increases the likelihood of this evidence being lost. In a slip or trip claim, the defect that caused the accident may be fixed or removed, making it difficult to assess the hazardous nature of the defect. And in terms of evidence, It is not just documents relating to the accident itself that are important to preserve. It is also evidence of the losses that a claimant has sustained. To explain, a person bringing a claim can claim for not only their injuries, but also for any financial losses sustained as a direct result of the accident. These claims need to be supported by evidence. Common examples are pay slips to support a claim for loss of earnings or receipts for medication or treatment. The more time that passes, the more likely it is that these kinds of documents could get lost or thrown away. What about evidence to prove the injuries? To prove the injuries sustained, we would instruct a medical expert to examine the claimant and prepare a report. The type of expert instructed will depend on the type of injury sustained and there may need to be a number of different experts involved. For example, a person involved in a road traffic accident may have broken their leg but also suffers flashbacks and nightmares. We would instruct an orthopaedic surgeon to comment on the fracture and a psychiatrist to comment on the psychological injuries. It would be tailored to each individual client. Each report will deal with whether the injuries were directly caused by the accident, the treatment received and also any relevant pre-accident medical history. The expert will also provide an opinion setting out how long it will take for those symptoms to resolve or plateau. It may be that the expert cannot provide a final prognosis without further tests being carried out or reports from experts and other specialisms taken into account. Once the experts have provided an opinion on all of the injuries the client has sustained, it is possible to value the injury element of the claim. 
Can you give any other reasons why a solicitor should be instructed as soon as possible after the accident? A solicitor can liaise with the other party's insurer and agree rehabilitation with the aim of returning the injured person to the highest levels of function and independence that is possible to achieve, and also to improve overall quality of life physically, emotionally and socially. Another reason is that if you cannot work following your injury and are in financial difficulty, your solicitor can apply to the defendant's representative for an interim payment. So we've spoken about some of the reasons why a solicitor should be instructed as soon as possible after an accident and the evidence needed to prove a claim. But what advice would you give to a person who has just been involved in an accident? Immediately after the accident, try to stay calm And if you're in a position to do so, get the details of all of the parties involved, including any witnesses, particularly in a road traffic accident. If you are injured at work, ask for the accident to be noted in the accident report book. Only do this if you are well enough to do so. Seek medical attention for your injuries. It is important that if you are hurt, you seek treatment as soon as possible. Make sure when you describe what happened, you are as clear and as accurate as possible. This not only applies to describing the accident at the hospital or GP, but also if you need to report the accident to the police or other organisation. It is important that all of the written accounts of the accident are accurate. As we were saying earlier, evidence is important, so keep hold of any documents you think might be relevant to your claim. Whilst it can be daunting to contemplate bringing a claim, seeking advice from a specialist personal injury lawyer sooner rather than later is important. That concludes this episode of the London Legal Podcast. We hope that you found it interesting and informative. Be sure to follow Hoshes and Alan on SoundCloud and on social media so that you can keep up to date with the podcast and all aspects of the law. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And of course, if you found the podcast useful, please do share it with your friends. Thank you for listening to the London Legal Podcast. Presented to you by Hodge, Jones and Allen Solicitors. To listen to more podcasts, follow us on SoundCloud or visit our website www.hja.net for interesting opinions and the latest legal information. Or if you need our help, call 0808 2780 216.